Good morning, everyone. It is very good to see you all this morning in the presence of our loving God. Let us pray before we begin today's message. Our gracious God, we thank you so much for giving us this morning and bringing us under your love and grace. Our God, now we are standing before your words. Please open our eyes and let us see your face. And please open our ears and let us hear your voice. And please open our hearts and let us heed your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. From last Sunday, we began our new sermon series as we are preparing the arrival of Jesus. Deck the holes, decorating your life with what matters. Throughout this series, we hope that we will prepare our hearts and souls with the hope, peace, joy, and love of God. Today, I'd like to talk about peace with you. The term peace has become one of the most essential, yet complicated words today. According to a dictionary, peace means not being disturbed or feeling contented and calm and not at all worried. This is what makes the term peace very complicated. There aren't many moments in our lives when we feel not at all worried. We always worry about something. We always fear something is not right around us or as we think it should be, whether it is our personal things or communal. Today's scripture is very deep. When I say it is deep, I mean I can feel the deep feelings of the author through this scripture. I can feel the deep stress and anxiety of Isaiah from the passage. In verse 9, it says, My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. Isaiah is crying out for God's judgment, which means that Isaiah didn't think that the reality he encountered was not right. So in short, Isaiah was not at peace at all because he had so many things to worry about. However, in today's scripture, Isaiah isn't just overwhelmed by his hardships and sufferings. What Isaiah is trying to do in this scripture is to leave his anxiety, worries, and concerns onto the hands of God. Isaiah proclaims in verse 11 and 12, O Lord, your hand is lifted up, but they do not see it. Let them see your zeal for your people and be ashamed. Let the fire for your adversaries consume them. O Lord, you will ordain peace for us, for indeed, all that we have done, you have done for us. Here, Isaiah invites God to step up for him, longing for the peace that only God could provide. On the other hand, we need to remember that Isaiah is crying to God as a member of his community, as a prophet of the kingdom of Judah, as well as an individual. The book of Isaiah talks about one of the darkest moments of the history of the kingdom. Especially during chapters 1 to 39, he was facing the Syro Ephraimite war, where the kingdom of Israel and Aram Damascus attacked Judah. Moreover, he also witnessed Jerusalem besieged by Sennacherib of Assyria and the existence of the kingdom of Judah was at stake during the reign of King Hezekiah. Therefore, the book of Isaiah we read today is the voice of the groaning Isaiah over the national disasters beyond his own existence, social absurdities that he could not change on his own, and suffering that shook the wholeness of humankind. In verse 13, he is crying to God, O Lord our God, 
other lords beside you have ruled over us. However, at the end of the same verse, he proclaims that it is the God of Israel who is greater than all of those false gods. He says, but we acknowledge your name alone. My family in Madison, I believe that the book of Isaiah is not some article or literature from a very far place from our lives. Instead, I firmly believe that this book and the prophet's words are from the deepest places of our hearts and our beings. As we each travel on our own journeys in life, we often face obstacles individually. These obstacles come in many forms, doubt, worry, or fear. Sometimes they could be a physical or financial, or issues to resolve, people, or just things we have to deal with along the way. Sometimes things happening in our lives don't seem right or as we think they should be. We are worried too much by them to be at peace. When faced with such problems, we mainly try to solve them on our own. Today, Isaiah tells us through the scripture to leave those obstacles onto God, to invite God to work for us, and to rejoice in the peace from God. On the other hand, at the same time, there are also obstacles that we face as a community, as a nation, or humankind. The global pandemic of the COVID-19 would never go away from us. And still, people are suffering from poverty, war, famine, exile, and so on. God's whole creation world is suffering from the climate crisis. Our community is falling apart by political agenda, racial discrimination, gender stereotypes, and financial inequality, and disparities in education and opportunities. And today, Isaiah invites us to declare that God is greater than all those false gods amid despair and suffering. My dearest family in Madison, However, there is one thing significant for us to feel the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is not just telling us to leave everything to God and do nothing. Although we didn't read today, I'd like to focus on verses 17 and 18. It reads, Like a woman with child who writhes and cries out in her pangs when she is near her time, so were we because of you, O Lord. We were with child, we writhed, but we gave birth only to wind. We have won no victories on earth, and no one is born to inhabit the world. Here, Isaiah is telling us about his struggles to make things around him right. He confesses that he was just like a woman with a child who writhed and cries. And he says that his effort and struggle were in vain, as if the woman gave birth only to wind. He even confesses that he won no victories in the world. My beloved family in Madison, right here, right here in these verses, the secret of the peace which Isaiah wants to address is hidden. It is so hard to feel peaceful in our lives because we are struggling for so many things in our lives. There is no extinction in this struggle for life. No matter where you are from, no matter how old you are, how much your income is, as human beings, we are all captivated by living. To say specifically, we are all captivated by struggle for life. There's no way out. However, what makes it worse is that our struggles 
don't always guarantee success. Whether it is to pursue our dreams, make a happy family, have some good friends, earn more money, make our community better, eliminate discrimination, and solve the global climate crisis, sometimes it seems that our struggles are in vain. And this is what keeps us from being at peace. Today, Isaiah is asking us whether we are at peace or under stress. He's inviting us to think about whether our struggles in our lives seem to be in vain. Then, right now, he is suggesting that it is time for us to leave those to God because God is greater than all these. In 2013, feeling a strong calling from God, I applied to Methodist Theological University in South Korea to become a pastor. Soon, I received a letter from the university that my application was approved. I was delighted at the moment because it made me think that I was walking on the right path for me. However, soon I became worried because my family and I could not afford the tuition fees. So I tried to find ways to make some money. I worked as a day laborer at a construction site. However, it wouldn't help me because the due date to pay the fees was less than a week ahead. I couldn't get a loan because I already had some for my family. Borrowing from my friends or relatives didn't seem reasonable because the fees were quite expensive. The deadline to pay the fees was four days ahead. So I just decided to stop all the struggles and I prayed to God. God, thank you for showing me your love and grace. And thank you so much for leading me this far. I believe becoming a pastor is what you call me to do. And studying at this university is the right path you reserved for me. However, I am not able to pay the tuition fees. And I am leaving it to you, into your hands. Please help me with it if it is your will. If it is not, I would postpone my registration and take another year to save money. Praying that, strangely, I was at peace. No mysterious deposit was suddenly made into my bank account. Still, the deadline was coming. However, as I determined that it was not in my hands, and once I left that up to God, I was so much relieved. My heart was full of confidence that God would work for me because this is the path that God prepared for me. Two more days passed and I was at an employment agency to find a job. And then I received a phone call from the university and the officer said, the school decided to give me two years of full scholarship because I had excellent grades among the new students. Hanging up, I just paused there and had a time of deep prayer. I cried in gratitude for God's guidance, love, and care for me. My beloved family in Madison, in South Korea, where I am from, there is a saying, sincerity, is the way of heaven which means if you've truly done your best for the things you face in your life then leave the rest to god i believe this is the secret of the peace from god 
Isaiah trying to tell us through today's scripture. Facing his nation falling, he must have had many problems both as an individual and as a prophet of the nation. Moreover, he confesses that all of his struggles to solve those problems came to nothing. It is not too much to say that he could never be at peace at his time. However, in today's scripture, he powerfully proclaims God is greater than all the false gods. He declares that God would come into his life and the nation, solve the problems, and bring true peace to them. And finally, he shouts out in verse 19, Your dead shall live, their corpses shall rise. O oh, dwellers in the dust, awake and sing for joy. And now, he is inviting us to do the same. My dearest family in Madison, are you not at peace right now? Are you facing some obstacles which seem too greater than yourself? Are all of your struggles for these in vain? Are you seeing the iniquity of the world? Are you weeping for your neighbors? Does your dedication and your hard work for them seem to be in vain? Today, let us leave them to the hands of God. On the second week of Advent, let us wait for Jesus Christ, who already came into the world for those in despair and who will come again for us. At this moment of this service, let us look on to the Holy Spirit who never misses a single groan of ours. Then, the true peace that only comes from our God will be poured onto every one of us onto our community and throughout the whole world. May the steadfast love of our loving God be with us all the time. Let's pray. Our God, thank you for speaking to us this morning. Our Heavenly God, today we are inviting you to come to our lives and that of our neighbors. As we leave all of our obstacles onto your hands, our God, please bring us the true peace that only you could provide. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.